Hi everyone, in this video, I'm going to show us how to calculate the eccentricity of an ellipse using Canva and Google Colab. Now, an ellipse is an oval shape that you can draw on a plane by tracing out a moving point so that the distances from the point to each of the focal point of the ellipse when summed together is a constant. One of the reasons we are interested in the ellipse is because planets, comets, and asteroids go around the sun in an elliptical orbit with the sun at one of the focal points. Now, the eccentricity of an ellipse measures the amount that the shape deviates from a circle. It goes from 0 to 1. If the eccentricity is 0, then it's very similar to a circle. If the eccentricity is closer to 1, for example, the uh, eccentricity of the Halley Comet, then it's a bit more elongated. In our example, we can calculate the eccentricity of the Comet Wintanen. We begin by creating a design in Canva with the width of 1091 and the height of 870 pixels to match our image size. Next, we upload our image into Canva. Since I already have the image in Canva, I can load this image onto my canvas by clicking on it or dragging it over. Then I would resize the image so that it would match my canvas. At this point, what we're going to do is we're going to use this handle right here and rotate the image so that the longest side, the longest length, is horizontal because this would correspond to our major axis. We don't have to do it exactly, just approximate is good enough. Then we want to draw the major axis on this image right here by clicking on element and find line. Let's say we can use this line right here and click and bring it over or we can use the one with two um, circle ends. So let me click on this and bring them over. And then we drag it so that it would be to the end of one ellipse and to the other end. We also want to make sure that the line goes through the sun. And for finer precision, we can use the up or down arrow key on our keyboard to nudge the line up or down a little bit. The next thing we're going to do is to draw a circle at the center of our line so that we can identify the semi-major axis. To do that, we can click on elements and type in circle. I would choose, for example, this gray circle and I can resize it so that it would match my image proportionally. To identify the center, we can drag out a guide so that we can read the position at 87. And this point is 1004. So I know that the center would be 1004 minus 87 divided by 2. And then, so this is the length. And we add that to 87 to get our position. So it's going to be about 545. So let me drag out the guy and move it to 545. So 546, that's close enough. And I can drag my circle into the center. 
our image has enough information to calculate the eccentricity using C and A. It's also a good idea to label the image for clarity. I would label the farthest point of the comet orbit from the sun as aphelion. Let me move the wood down here a little bit. So the aphelion is the point in the orbit of the comet when it's farthest from the sun and perihelion is the point of the comet when it's closest to the sun. We can also get the eccentricity from these two parameters. This is because when we do observation, we don't know the center and we only observe the perihelion and aphelion. So it's more convenient to calculate the eccentricity from these two parameters. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to calculate the distance from the center to the sun. Again, right, we can drag out the guy, or since we already have the guy, this guy right here at 546, we can drag the next guy out to the sun, and that would be A43. So the distance from here to here is A43 minus 546. A43 minus 546. We know that C is 297. For the semi-major axis, it's going to go from 1004 minus 546. So A is going to be 458. Now that we find out the value for C and A, we can calculate the eccentricity for the comet Winnaton and recall our value. Obviously, the comet Winnaton does not go around the sun in pixel unit. But if we keep the same proportion, when we find the eccentricity by taking the ratio of C over A, it will still give us the correct answer. To remove the guy, we can click on it and drag it to the side. And to put the guy on to the image again, we can click on the side and drag the guy to where we want it to locate. To calculate the eccentricity, so far we use C over A, but we can also use the aphelion and perihelion to calculate the eccentricity. For this, we can turn to Google Colab. Google Colab allows anybody to write and execute Python code or calculation through the browser. And this is especially well suited to machine learning, data analysis, and education. In this exercise, we will just do the calculation of the eccentricity from the aphelion and perihelion. In this diagram, dA is the aphelion and dB is the perihelion. dA is going to equal to A plus C and dB is going to be equal to A minus C. Another way of saying it is C and A equal to these right here. So we can find the eccentricity using the aphelion and perihelion um, in this formula. An example of calculating the eccentricity is the Halley's Comet. If you look in Wikipedia, a Halley Comet would have the aphelion of 35.14 and 0.59 astronomical unit. So if we put this into this formula right here and run it, we see that it has the eccentricity of 0.96. Colab is free with a Google or Gmail account. You can sign up or log in at this link. Now, once you're in Colab, you can click on File to create a new notebook. With the new notebook created, we can click here to rename or change the notebook name. And we can click here to create a new cell 
where we can enter in the code for calculation. So for example, if we want to calculate the eccentricity of the Hades Comet, we can type in the code. So we set d sub a, which is the aphelion to 35. d sub p is the perihelion to 0.59. These are astronomical units. Then we tell Python to calculate E. And here we print out the eccentricity. So when we want to execute this calculation, we can just click on this play arrow. As you can see, it gives the correct eccentricity for Halley's Comet. Now to calculate the eccentricity for the Wintanen Comet, we can click on the add code to create a new cell. And we can type in the same formula. Python is expecting dA and dB to have some value. So what you want to do is go to Wikipedia or pause the video right here and type in these values for the comet Wintanen. And then click play to execute and you would get the eccentricity for the comet Wintanen. One other thing you want to keep in mind is that indentation is important in Python. Make sure that there's no indentation. If you have an indentation, for example, like this, and try to execute it, it would give you an error. So with these lines, there's no indentation. And Python executes the code normally.